the project that we um, decided to use for our STEAM is actually a cookbook that the students created for the preschool students. Um, and then for science, um, we talked about we talked about temperature control, we talked about food safety, we talked about, you know, what the degrees, thank you, what the degrees of food has to be in order for it to be safe. Um, for engineering, um, the students designed a nutritionally appropriate meal uh, using a, a accurate cooking methods, baking, frying. Um, they had to they had to determine like what am I gonna use to cook this and what am, is this gonna you know is this gonna work out if I build it like this because they actually a lot of them created recipes where they had to like make a little porcupine a animal out of like an apple and you know so there was actually some building in there you know as well art also you know in creating their little recipe it had to be appealing to the children they had to want to eat it. it could it look like a pile of mud you know, it needed to like be fun. Um, and then math, um, we talked about recipes and measurements on recipes. Like they had to create their own, they had to structure it on the paper. They had to use publisher or Word in order to make their actual book. So, you know, we were able to get this project and there were things we were already doing it. We just had to have the conversation and just break everything down. he gave us and how we can improve so that when they do come we can showcase what we're doing. Um, something that we noticed is that we really need to work on displaying what we're doing. So they want to be able to walk into a classroom and see an area designated as STEAM and then they can identify the standards and how they're being infused across the different curricular areas even though maybe I teach only science, I'm incorporating math and I'm incorporating technology. So um, that's the goal that, that we'd like to, I guess, take away from today. So as a resource, just like we have the gladiator researchers.weebly.com, we have gladiator steam.weebly.com. So on that page, and then this one, Doc, if you could link it to the website, that would be helpful too. But what we did was we infused the um, school-wide research paper as our fourth nine weeks STEAM project that every every teacher can, um, can post in his or her class because it is incorporating all of the STEAM standards and there's actually a sample plan that we have on the site, and we'll have it printed for every teacher to post in his or her class. But you'll notice that the standards are identified for science, arts, and math, not for technology and engineering. In the past, we thought we had to have actual standards for technology and engineering, and he clarified for us, um, Ms. Wilcom and I were the ones who were able to go along with him, that really what they want is that the technology is being used by the student to create something to exhibit their understanding. So we reworded this to say students will utilize technology <coughs> to create, and then the teacher can add their whatever they're working on, PowerPoint, they're creating a video, but whatever it is a student is creating, and then what the learning objective is meant to be. So this idea, this plan, is that we are universally sharing what we're doing in our class, um, so that anybody who's out, like from the outside visiting can easily um, find it. So engineering, what he said too was that they're going through the design process. Not that we're telling students, you have to build this and here are the steps to do it. No, that we give them a set parameter and some sort of a measurable goal and we have them figure it out. So it's problem-based learning. So that applies to our research paper because we're telling the students, you have to come up with a question, now go research it. And then they have to reevaluate. Their question will probably change. So we listed that here to show that they're researching, they're reevaluating, they're doing further research, and then the arts and math standards, in particular for our research paper, we said how scientific inferences are drawn from scientific observations, because a lot of them, either way, whether they're talking about a scientific topic or not, would have to go through that process in their research. And then the art standard, using technology or technological tools to create art with varying effects and outcomes, and of course that aligns itself with their Petra Pucha, because if they are doing an argumentative paper on something that is about maybe detrimental effects to human health based on acid rain, they're not gonna have like yellow, bright, happy sun, you know, imagery on their pot, on their pecha kucha. So those selections of art come in in their in their <coughs> presentation. And then the math, they're having to do the survey, so using data from a sample survey, and it's all aligned to the standards. 
So we've given an example. We have um, also on the website, here it says, um, click here to access our integrated planning guide so every teacher can download the Excel document with a blank plan. And at the bottom, there is a tab that says blank plan, drop down plan, like different levels, or I guess types of sheets. So this drop down one, teachers can yeah, there's like a, a, a spot that's empty. But it has the standards there, and then the same thing here, the actual written ones. What we did was we imported them, or we put them as data validation from these tabs. So it says down here, science, arts, and math. So teachers can do, like, control F and look for velocity. And they go find the standard, and it should be easy. So it's not that we're asking them to do, you know, so much extra work. But science is there, arts is there, math is there. And then what we did this morning was we included a sample um, of, of a lesson that Mr. Brooks did in his class. And then we also added one that Ms. Aguila did in her class with Ms. Santiago. And then another one. So at least we're seeing how it's being, I guess, uh, documented in the different areas. So we're asking that the teachers do the same thing so that when they come at the end of the month, there is a uniform way of us displaying it. So Ms. Aguila, will you help? Yes. <laughs> so through the, the principles of teaching classes, um, the kids are going to make this for all of the science, math, and uh, CTE teachers, right? Electives. Electives. And just so that everyone's, everyone has a poster in their room and it's, you know, just has a uniform look and when they come around they can say, oh, there's their STEAM poster. Now, um, the, the teacher's going to be able to kind of choose their design. We did it vertically first and it didn't work as well as doing it like this horizontally uh, for the nine weeks. But the idea is that each for each nine weeks they're supposed to have one we don't like to use the word projects, but one activity or one lesson that touches on at least more than one of the the subject areas. So it should be it could be science and math. Like I was talking with um, one of the PE teachers, and then we were talking about how you know they might be able to integrate science and math easier than art or technology, for example. But they do talk about hydration and how much water you should drink for how much time they are outside and things like that. So that's science and math. So for each activity that they do, then they would just complete this form, okay, um, using the pull down and just type it up. And then they would just put evidence, evidence of that activity on the board. The next nine weeks, the same thing. So right now, when they come the 22nd, each teacher should have two activities on their board. So the TA is going to make the board, but the teacher is going to be responsible for giving the TA these papers. Okay? Um, and the artifacts. To right, and the exactly. And the artifacts to put up here. So, um, so in this board that we made really quick, um, we have the forms, and then we just put the artifacts on the side. It doesn't have to be perfect, it could just be put on there, whatever. And then the third nine weeks, and then the fourth nine weeks, we, you know, Monica, um, the one that she did with the research paper, that one goes here. Okay? So everyone's fourth nine weeks one will be the same. So really, the teachers just have to think back to things that they've done, because all our teachers are doing this. They're just not thinking about it. They're just not thinking about, you know, oh yeah, it is, there is math in that. You know, or when I when they you know when they analyze that graph, that is math. Or you know, so they just have to have the conversation. So we were talking about the department meeting, um, having the teachers actually sit down and start the thinking process at the meeting, so that they could have those conversations at the meeting and complete this blank one. And, and, and complete this one there so that the PE <coughs> teachers can talk to each other or the algebra teachers can talk to each other because maybe the math teachers might have a difficult time saying, well, how do I include art, you know, or how do I, and maybe they haven't included art in the first two nine weeks, maybe it's something that they could think about 
purposely doing for their third nine weeks activity. Okay, to, I'm sorry, to tie a timeline to this, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask the AEs to bring me everybody from the departments that they're working with, who it is that did it. So you all need to work with your people to make sure it gets done by not this Friday, next Friday, because they're visiting the very next week. Okay, so next Friday they're going to bring that to me. So everybody needs to be doing it. Okay. And, and we try to make it a little easy for you. We're actually videotaping this presentation so that when you go back and meet with your departments, that it'll be a lot easier for you to explain it to them. And of course, if you need us to come by to also give you additional support, we'll do that as well. But this whole segment here is being videotaped. And the goal is to have time to be able to do like a peer review. So we have teachers looking at how the how the standards are being presented and that they're age appropriate standards. Because in some classes that we went into, we know that there is more than one standard that's being taught, but then the teachers had a hard time articulating it. And if they had it on paper, there would be no question. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, it would be more beneficial to us because we'd be able to go to more classes. So whatever our average is would be increased, right? Because of course we're dividing it by more classes. Um, instead of maybe they go to one class and they talk to a teacher for 15 or 20 minutes trying to help the teacher say that there was a purposeful incorporation of another standard, and then we get one point. So all of it is on a level of five. So that's part of what I wanted to mention about the calibration. That's included on the, on the plan. There are five different areas, <coughs> STEAM, and the number of standards you can incorporate into the lesson or activity or unit. It can be several different activities. Um, is what gives you your calibration. So a teacher having a 1.0 means in a science class, I'm teaching science. And that's what they saw a lot of. They said, I, I went into math, I know they're teaching math. And I went to science, I know they're teaching science. And I went into you know, technology, I know they're teaching technology. But if I'm purposefully incorporating it, not that we have to tell our teachers to go to a 5, but if we can move past 1, we're already making improvements. Uh, a device, any kind of device, that would throw a tennis ball as far as you possibly could. And the constraint was that it had to be small enough that it would fit through the classroom door so that we could take it outside and, and test it. And uh, the gentleman who came around last week actually pointed out that uh, it would have been better to give them a minimum uh, goal. Uh, so I switched it to 25 feet, already knowing that their prototypes didn't reach 25 feet. So now they'll have, now they can go back to their prototypes. And in fact, they've already done this. And they've all critiqued the different prototypes and made a list of, of improvements. And now they're working on the second version. So. Th the engineering process is the same for every project in every class, and um, you, it's, it's the same tasks. Ask, imagine, plan, create, test, improve, and share. So we evidence the, uh, the improvements and the testing by they took data for how far the tennis balls actually flew. They can show their data. They, made, uh, they collaborated and they made posters showing what the improvements should be, um, and we documented everything with photographs, which we can put up on the board. And, um, and they're in the process of building now the one final project that hopefully will throw the, the tennis ball to the full 25 feet. Um, not really sure what else to share with you. Uh, well, the art standard was the technical drawing. Okay, right. So um, before they build their prototypes, they all uh, did technical drawings that showed the dimensions of what they were going to build at a time. And so we post that up as um, that for one of the standards. I think this art standard would pretty much apply. If you're going to build anything, if your project is to build anything, I think you can meet the art standard with this Visual Art 912S31, which is basically manipulating materials uh, to create a, de a desired result in two or three dimensional artworks. So I think that was the closest thing. Everybody can probably pretty much use that same standard for art. Which was the best design that you saw for the kids? Um, they all had really innovative things. One person had just like a spring coming out of a board, and you know they pulled the spring back and to throw the tennis ball. Others uh, used bungee made catapults with bungee cords. Some people um, to create tension made a catapult that had uh, uh, like tight string that was uh, that, that they they wound up. 
it stuck the arm of the catapult through, and then when you let go, the unraveling of the kite string actually made the arm go. Um, but um, they all, they're all the prototypes were in need of improvement, which is good because it teaches them the design process and how to think critically and how to make their projects better. Yeah, and that, that's a research paper too. Mm -hmm. You know, which design is best for catapulting a ball, whatever. And then they do the research about catapults and tension. And, and, and then, for, and then for, the math, for the math, we're graphing the parabolas and we're, and for the, the science, we're able to, by timing, how we timed how long the ball was in flight. And so when you time how long it's in flight, since it's going from the ground to the ground, half the time that's in the air, it's falling, half the time it's rising. And you can just use basic physics calculations to figure out how high the tennis ball went based upon the time of the flight on the distance. Mr. Brooks. Yes. So you consider your project are very successful, right? Very what? Very successful. Success. Successful? Yeah. I think so. The gentleman who came by said that it would be a five. Okay, my construction class would like to charge you some money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, send me the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Good okay. job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now we'll have Ms. Law, and we also have Ms. Rivera and Ms. Aguilar. Um, okay, so um, I tried to look at one of the STEAM projects to look at what we were already doing because um, right now I'm in test preparation mode. So my main thought was not to go above and beyond into a different direction, but to more look at my class and analyze a lesson that I already did. So in our EKG class, um, they're learning cardiac and cardiology. So I looked at the science to, to mirror it to biology where they had cardiovascular in there as well. So I pulled that for one of the science. Um, for the technology, the students actually perform an EKG, um, but that wouldn't have been meeting the engineering requirement. So what I did was I gave the student a problem and gave them an EKG that had a disease oriented to it, but didn't tell them what the disease was. And then they had to go back, perform the EKG, figure out what was wrong, calculate all the um, instances and the parameters for them to come up with what amplitude was being used on the machine, the voltage, the time intervals that were required, so that meant the math. Um, and then they use a specific uh, pen, penning to do this, so that meant the art requirement. Um, the technology um, that I used is my students are making a portfolio currently with YouTube. So I made them make a private account where they're building all of their practicals, things that they do hands-on, into YouTube videos. And then I select one of the best, one of the YouTube videos to show the following year what the students are doing, so I'm kind of like making a cheat for me, so that next year I won't have to do as much work and they can see their own. There's a lot of videos on Zoom, but it doesn't have the equipment I have or the same room I have, so they're working on that. Um, I did get stuck in the math. Um, me personally, I'm struggling a little bit through the math section there, so math people, if you can help me out here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I know how to do the math, which Abdiel, Abdiel can help Abdiel, me. Abdiel. Abdiel. Yes, I have Abdiel. But I'm struggling with finding the standard that I'm looking for. So I know this is math. So when I go into the math section, I struggled with trying to find the words that match what the math is. I know it's math. I just have to figure out what math. And I put in words. I was putting in uh, time, amplitude, and I'm not finding it. So it's either I'm teaching something on a lower function than 9 to 12, which could be possible. That would be a pre calculus of amplitude and like time. This is sign. Pre calculus. Yeah, pre calculus. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. That, that would have made a five pointer. Thank you. <laughs> but then that's really important what she's saying because some of what was posted in some of the classrooms was using tech, um, not, not technology, I'm sorry, using equipment. Right? Like, oh, we had to use a drill to do this or we had to um, use a calculator. That's not what they mean when they say using technology because the students are producing something. So we have to make sure that we're sharing that correctly. I had a few students do was make a functional mechanical car. So the science standard um, fell under. Let's see, I have it here. <laughs> we all have we all have a different way. The science one, they had to select appropriate tools and they worked together as a team. It was the CSCC 1.2 technology. There's a technology standard that says demonstrate an understanding of the engineering design. The first one that they made. It hit a wall and it broke apart, so they were like, no, we need a stronger one. The second one they made had hot glue. Um, engineering had demonstrated understanding of the civil engineering and architecture field. 
So they had they they spoke about their prototype. They explained what they did to improve. Um, now it hits a wall and nothing just bounces off. Um, art. There's one that says use resistance, energy, time, and focus, but I think Mr. Brooks is better because there was an actual 3D model. And then the map, they also have the measurements from the different pieces that they used for the car, and they found the volume for the different pieces, um, the cylinders that they used for the motor, the wheels, two Gatorade caps and two bottle caps. So very homemade. And that that thing can move. And I, and I have the... The Steam page, as well as some pictures up on the on a Steam board I have in my classroom. So that's how I have it presented. The pictures from the prototype have the actual little car, and I have the chart with the, all the standards for the lesson. That's it. So we just want to convey to the teachers that we're here to help them display what they're already doing, not not go back and try to create something. So we have the students who are going to be helping, and then we'll review what they do at the department meetings and collect them so that next week we can do a walkthrough as a faculty and then give some feedback so that when they come, and the date is the 26th, it's the 26th. Thank you.